Hyneman and Higher. Chapter 6, Differentiation, Mixed Exercises at the End, Success. The second part of 9, because the first part was a little bit long. But this one is going to be simpler, that first part was a bit nasty. So again, it's sketch the graph of this function. And you can see, just from the nature of those factorizations, this should turn out to be quite nice. Same steps. First of all, where does it cut the axis? Well, it will cut the y-axis when x is 0. Which means y simply will be 0. So I've got that point straight away, cuts the y-axis at zero, so that's going through the origin. Where will it cut the x-axis? Well, if you're sitting on the x-axis, you've got no height. That means the y-coordinate is zero, which means this has to equate to zero. So ax cubed minus x to the four equals zero, and that factorizes very nicely. No formula here. x cubed can come out, leaving you eight minus x. And very quickly you get either x is 0, or if this bracket makes it 0, x equals 8. No feeding it back in, because I know the answer is going to be 0. So, that's the same answer I've got already. So the only new answer is this one then. It cuts at the point 8, 0. Well, there's my two intersections with the axis. It goes through the origin and cuts the axis, x-axis again at 8. Next part. Right, what about the derivative? Divide by dx would be multiplied by the power, 24 multiplied by the power, 4, one off the power in each case. So I'm looking for the stationary points. Those are the other significant points in the curve. So I'm going to get stationary points if this derivative is ever equal to 0, if it ever takes a little horizontal level off. Now what have we got? So we've got 24x squared minus 4x cubed equals 0. Another nice easy one because it's got common factors. So I can take out a 4, I can take out an x squared, so I've got 4x squared out. That leaves a 6, and that leaves an x. So straight away I've got either x equals 0, or x equals 6. Now x equals 0, that's that old friend again, it kept cropping up all over the time. x equals 0 means that I've got y equals 0. So something happens at the origin, one of its turns is there, or one, not one of its turns necessarily, one of its stationary moments. Then at x equals 6, I'll feed it back into this, or this expression's the same as that, and that'd be better, it's factorised there. I've got 6 cubed, y is going to be 6 cubed times 2. 6 cubed is 216, so that'll be 432. So something happens at 6, 4, 3, 2. That's quite far up. So there's my two turning points, stationary points, I should really say. I can't assume that it's actually going to take a turn. It might just take a little twist to itself. Right, find the nature of them. Nature table. Something happened at x equals 0. Something happened at x equals 6. What happened before, between and after? Now you can either just pick numbers and put them into this. Do that if you like. I like my little table of signs. I've got my 4x squared and I've got a 6 minus x because I can just rattle off the signs and not think about any calculations apart from this wee thing here because that's now backwards. Well, x squared, that'll be 0 at 0, or otherwise, it's always positive. This will be 0 at 0. Now, instead of it being negative, 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 positive, it's been reversed. And when you reverse a subtraction, you flip all the signs over. So that's going to go plus, 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 minus. And then finally, divide by dx will just be the products. Positive, 0, positive, 0, negative. Going up, pausing, going up again, pausing, deciding to come down. A rising point of inflection, P-O-I, I'll just put down, and a maximum turning point. There we are. So that's what we've got the two. I'll put it down here. A rising point of inflection at 0, 0, and a maximum turning point at 6, 4, 3, 2. And now it's just a case of, let's get this all cleared and draw the picture. So that's it cleared. So the first thing then to draw this picture would be, get the axis, put in where it cuts the axis, Turning points, stationary points, one at the origin, and one at the top. Then put the curve through it with the rising point of inflection and the maximum, like this. And there it is. There's the graph of y equals 8x cubed minus x to the 4, which you could write again there, but that's probably close enough to it. Question 9b.